Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So here we are for um, class number 14. We are one step closer from finishing this course. And um, well, I hope you guys are doing great. I hope everything is going amazing and that you had an amazing day so far. And of course, that we wrap it up with a good note. So for tonight, what we're going to do, we're going to be working on the conversation that I um, showed you guys last night. Then we're going to um, to look at phrases or at different ways to refer to the past. As we already know, we are talking a lot about the past right now, but that doesn't mean that we don't have any space to talk about something different as we are going to be talking also about the future. Um, predicting the future with will, which is, uh, well, you know, a structure that is very helpful when we want to um, to provide an idea of how something is going to come out. So uh, those are going to be the basic things that we're going to be learning. And uh, hopefully you guys are ready to go ahead and work on that. However, of course, as it's uh, already a custom, before we get started with the topics, I have a question for you. I would like to get to hear from you. And tonight I thought about something that is relatively special. I hope you guys do not end up as last night, you know, just telling me that there is nothing uh, in your life referring to that. Because tonight, what I would like us to share is what kind of activity do you guys do? What is it that um, you like to do when you feel not sad, but when you feel blue? Okay, in English, we say that we feel blue when, you, when we're just not feeling our best, you know? And uh, I think that humanity it's going through that process still like we have came kind came out of or we just came out of a um very stressful situation with the pandemic and all that and i think many of us are still struggling you know to get back to to normal like we just feel weird sometimes we just don't feel like ourselves or i think that most of the people around me go through that so i assume that you know much of people are also going through that so I hope that there is an activity that you guys like to perform, something that you guys like to do when you're not feeling your best. Like in my case, for example, it is simply going to the beach. Like when I don't feel my best, I just create any kind of uh, situation where I can have the chance to go to the beach. So that's me. Okay, That's what I do when I don't feel my best. Now, I want to hear about you. What do you guys do? when you don't feel your very best. So we're, I think we're going to start by hearing from uh, uh, Jenny. How about you, Jenny? What is something that you like to do when you don't feel your best? Uh, I like to go to the mountain. Hmm, OK. And uh, you like to hike or simply just go sightseeing? <laughs> ¿Te gusta I... caminar o simplemente ver lo, lo, lo que está alrededor? Mm, walk, walk. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, you can see the, the trees and flowers. Uh, all the, all the, the, the monkeys. Life. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yes. Nice. That is a very nice activity, you know, to get um, de-stressed. I think it's something really nice to do. So great. Very good. Thank you. All right. Um, how about the case of um, Noemi? In your case, Noemi, what is an activity that you like to do when you, when you do just don't feel your best? In my case, I like to watch in the Los Naranjos Son Sonate. Mm hmm for me, I relaxing. Oh, okay. So you work in a different place. The mountain, the mountain Los Naranjos. Ah, okay. That Los sounds. Sonete. All right, that sounds nice. You know, that sounds like a a change of pace, probably. You know, doing something out of the routine. So of course you're going to be um in a different space and you're gonna feel better. So nice, very nice. That sounds like a nice way to relax. Very good. Um, how about, um, Andrea, what is an activity you like to perform when you want to feel better, when you just don't feel your best? Watch the movie or the, 
Uh, this, I don't know how do you say series. Series. <laughs> series. Uh, oh. I love it. See, okay. I really relax with when I see the the movie or or series. Oh, oh great. <laughs> okay, so yeah, watching movies, you know, spending some time doing something apart from routine, as as, as I said before. Of course, that's gonna help us feel better. So great, watching a movie. All right. Um, una cosa, ahorita se me acaba de ocurrir que se me, se me pasó por alto más o menos lo que había dicho Jenny anteriormente. A ver, um, cuando hablamos del de ejercicio regular, ¿verdad? Que es la caminata, esto se ref vamos a referirnos a esto en inglés como walk, ¿sí? O sea, walk es caminar, así. Walk, when, when we go for a walk, es cuando vamos de caminata, ¿sí? Pero también existe esta otra que fue la palabra que yo utilicé, que es hike, ¿sí? Hike. La palabra hike se refiere a también una caminata, pero es una caminata un poco más retadora, ¿sí? Como cuando vamos a la montaña, no hacemos una walk, porque walk es mayormente en superficies planas. En cambio, hiking, it takes place on <coughs> inclined surfaces. Um, uh, surfaces, surfaces, inclined surfaces. Entonces, cuando hay, por ejemplo, vegetación, hay árboles, hay rocas, o sea, hay diferentes, ¿verdad? Eh, obstáculos que tenemos que, pues, que sobrepasar, eso sería más bien un hiking. Y por otro lado, tenemos ya como el tope de la cadena, que sería el climb, ¿sí? Climb, esto ya es algo más, uh, más allá, ¿verdad? Climbing refers to going vertically, like basically going up a mountain vertically, ¿sí? O sea, los que, los que hacen más o menos así como rappel, o sea, es el, es el climbing, ¿sí? La escalada, o sea... Es, como les digo, ya más extremo, ya más complicado y no todo el mundo necesariamente lo hace. Pero, eh, para que sepamos, cuando vamos a caminar así en una montaña, normalmente lo que hacemos es, en inglés, es hiking. No walking, sino que hiking, ¿sí? Ok. Por otro lado, esto lo retomé porque también, um, en el caso específico de lo que, um, lo que dijimos ahorita, Andrea, cuando eh, decimos o nos referimos a ver una película o ver una serie, no necesariamente vamos a utilizar el artículo the, sino puede ser a. Sí, watch a movie. Entonces, eso es ver una película, a movie. Y en ese, eh, porque si decimos the movie, es como si yo anteriormente en la conversación que estoy teniendo con alguien ya dije, ¿verdad? Ah, yo tengo una película que a mí me ayuda a sentirme mejor. Digamos que es Forrest Gump, just as an example, sí. So, Forrest Gump is a movie that I like to watch because I feel better when I watch that movie. Entonces, ya más adelante en la conversación, después de otro par de cosas que se dijeron, yo puedo decir, yeah, that's why I watch the movie. Sí, porque yo ya mencioné cuál es la película. Ahora yo digo the movie porque la otra persona ya sabe, se supone, qué película es. En cambio, si yo voy a mencionar una película X, yo ni siquiera sé qué voy a ver. O sea, es como que en el momento que me siento mal, yo me meto a Netflix, HBO, lo que sea, ¿verdad? Paso por todas las, las streaming que pueda tener. Y elijo una película, en ese caso es mejor decir a movie, a movie or a series, porque no estoy hablando de una película en específico, sino estoy diciendo una película, o sea, como al aire, ¿verdad? Algo, una, o sea, no, no necesariamente eh, definiendo de forma directa cuál película es la que me gusta ver. Ok, so, uh, moving on. Let's see if we can get to hear from uh, Ana Mendoza. How about you? What is an activity you like to perform when you um you feel blue? Anna, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Um uh ride bicycles. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Do you have uh, like a specific place where you would like to go to ride your bike? Um in some cases I go to the mountain. But usually I got uh here in my name in my neighbor mm -hmm. oh, to ride okay. bicycle. Mm -hmm. Great. So yeah, riding a bike on your neighborhood. Very good. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, riding a bike or you know, many sports can help us get out of a stressful situation or get out of a difficult situation. Because when we put our body to work, of course, our mind is going to have to be busy on something different. Um, so, yeah, 
um, basically clearing the mind is what um sports do and that's why they are of course very helpful when yeah. it comes to when it comes to feeling better to to uh releasing some stress so nice very good thank you for sharing now how about you dennis in your case what is something you like to do when you feel blue when you don't feel your best Good evening, everyone. Uh, teacher, I think you know the answer. Uh, I really enjoy uh, playing the piano, the piano. <laughs> play the, the guitar, or or sing uh, some some sounds when I when I feel blue. All right, very good. Yeah, I mean, I also respect a lot the fact that music has a lot of power when it comes to. Um, getting someone out of a situation that is not the best. Um, music is is very useful. I mean, when we listen to music, we have that chance of moving from what we were doing and thinking of something different. So yeah, it's also a very good way to you know to relax and to um, to get some some good feelings. You know, to feel better. So great, very good. How about the case of Alejandro? What is an activity, Alejandro, that you like to perform when you just feel blue? Good evening. I I think that maybe it's um, working my budget, my personal budget, and I love to do a um, list of pending things mm. that I have to do. So I, I when I feel stressed, I do it my personal budget. Okay, things so that some, I have to to buy and other something that will questions. stress many of us is something that this stress you. Yes. Okay, yes. that's nice. <laughs> you know, that's a kind of like a superpower. Because <laughs> yeah, no, it, case... it's because it's because I I feel that uh, do this kind of uh, of things. Uh, um, you said an order, I think. Give me, give me, give me, yeah, just give mm -hmm. me more order in my life. Yes, yeah. that's the reason. Yeah, and I mean, at, I can at, the see end, that. at the end, I feel a, a lot of uh, peace, maybe. No, I mean, because mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> now you know the path that you have to follow. You have like the steps you need to take. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, I kind of saw that. I kind of foresaw that because it was like, uh, I mean, probably just because of the order, you know, when you do that, when you do like budgets, when you do like um, ordering things. You now know what you have to do in order to get where you need to get. So, of course, that's going to take a lot of stress out of your back and it's going to release you from the pressure of not knowing where you're going or not knowing what you're doing. So, yeah, I, of course, can see where you're coming from with that. So, great. All right. That's a nice idea as well. Very good. Um, how about the case of uh, Francisco? What is an activity you like to perform, Francisco, when it comes to getting out of blue situations? Repeat the question, teacher, sorry. What is an activity that you like to do or something that you do when you don't feel your best, when you feel blue? Mm, I, I don't understand you the don't question, understand? sorry. <laughs> Algo que te guste hacer cuando no te sientas como el, tu mejor ser, like when you don't feel your best. Cuando no me siento lo mejor, ¿qué es algo que te gusta hacer a ti? Uh, driving. Creo que dejé lo mejor para el final, ¿eh? <laughs> driving. Uh, I, I like driving. Trabajo, the... trabajo manejado, yeah. me quejo del tráfico todo el día, <laughs> pero para relajarme me gusta manejar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, other but, is video anime, uh, read manga, manguas. I, uh -huh. I think you're, I think maybe, maybe, maybe mm. it might be like driving on open roads or driving at night, right? Uh, mm, um, or driving they, in the city, driving in the same streets that you normally drive. Uh, oh, lo que sea. Yeah. Okay. Sí, porque, o sea, yo, por ejemplo, siento que a mí me, 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 me relaja a veces el manejar, pero en carreteras eh, abiertas, como si puedo manejar. O sea, es que a mí like... creo que me relaja ver a la gente enojada cuando se están gritando, <risa> se están pitando. Pitando y, y la, lo que, que es la música a todo volumen. Ajá. Bueno. 
O sea, usted se pone como, ah, tienen más problemas ellos que ellos. Ah, ya. Yeah. <risa> sígale, <risa> sígale, 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 digo sígale, yo. Sígale, destrócese solo. Y ella con la música y... <risa> Ajá, ya. Yeah. I can see that. Ya. Yeah. Um, other is uh, driving to the beach or... Um, ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Parque acuático? Uh, water park. Water park. For, yeah, camp, very for example, for uh, aeroport... Um, Um, aquí en San Salvador, ¿cómo se llama el aeropuerto internacional? El, uh, mm. Bueno, por ahí va uno de, de aguas. Muy bonito, la verdad. Ah, Atlantis. No, 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 no. Es. Um, no remember the name. Uh, is, um, I'm sorry, no remember the name mm. in this moment. Okay. Eh, porque voy a meter la, los pies con los chimbolos para que me los muerdan todos. <risa> ah, sigo, 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 ¿qué? Mm. Sí, we, a eso, ahí es eso, eso. Sí, Guatemala. Yeah. Sí, yeah. yeah. mm. It's Never beautiful been. place. Is this is Santa Ana. No. Sí, Guatemala. Yes, sí, Guatemala. Santa Ana. Yeah. Santa Ana. Yeah. Sí. Bueno, yo por tiene, arriba me voy tiene, por el aeropuerto, tiene, en esa carretera. Creo que Francisco tiene otro aeropuerto. Y como le gusta manejar, él maneja el camino largo. ¿Ya? No siento aquí, el tiempo cuando voy manejando. Venía aquí por bajo, se viene hasta aquí al, 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 al puerto, del puerto deportivo, y va por allá. Por allá. Por no, no, no. no, es por el, por, el, por el aeropuerto. Pero no recuerdo el aeropuerto cómo se llama. Pero bueno. Y en el Ciguatehuacá no hay chimbolos. Ah, pues no, entonces no es Ciguatehuacá. Usted va a Ah, uh, I answered the name, I don't remember exactly. Sorry. Well, that's okay. Apa, I mean, Apa, Ichan, yeah, those are here in, in like uh, Zacate Coluca, so probably those. Parque Acuático, Ichamichen, perdón. Ichamichen. Okay, Ichamichen, so that's, Ichamichen, yeah. that's from Zacate Coluca going south from Zacate. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Aunque está un poco... Sí, yeah. Aunque yeah. yeah, está un poco descuidado, pero está bonito. I have never been there. I have been to Amapulapa. But I have never been to each and meeting. I have seen the like the the ads many times. I have seen the, the all the, the you know the promotions, but I have never been there. Another place that I haven't been is Galicia. I think it's not even open anymore. Teacher, see, ¿Sí? I picture is the 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 lake, uh, the statue. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, is that a like, um, like the the, a the fish? Mm, okay. Um, no, no se mira bien. Lo siento. Ah, el parque, ajá, el parque. Oh, nice. también ahí está la Ciguanaba, Francisco. Mm. Okay. Beautiful. I love you, Ciguanaba. <laughs> oh, kiss right. me, kiss very, me, baby. <laughs> very interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you, you teacher? Know, in my case, mm -hmm. uh, well, I said before, um, going to the beach, but There are many things actually that I do because I do get stressed easily. I do not have the easiest life at times. Um, but I think I know it's gonna be a cliche, like a huge cliche, that, what I'm gonna say. But spending time with my girlfriend, like I feel like that, you know, sets me in a way uh... better. Mood. Yeah, that set me sets me in a way better mood. Like right now, for example, um, as I'm working a lot, she's also working a lot. Uh, we don't see one another that much. So that is something that, you know, that uh, might happen soon, that I might need to do soon. So, yeah. But, you know, we have different activities. For example, Francisco, he likes chimbolos to eat his feet to feel better. So, great. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Excuse, okay, so... excuse me, teacher. What did you say? What did you say with your girlfriend? Spending time Are with you? her. Spending? Excuse me? Spending time with her. Spending time. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, okay. Spend time it's, is it's, like, it's like basically, uh, it's like saying hang out, you know, like <laughs> being with her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, yeah. I, I understand. There, there is a, there is a, a couple of uh, uh, scientific uh, development, 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 mm -hmm. development scientific that explain that is because human, human cells or human being. Mm hmm Human beings. Human, ser human beings uh, 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 produce uh, enzymes. Uh, yeah, that is uh, oxytocin. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. That's the name of the oxytocin that human beings uh, produce when we are together to the other of human beings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So that that is that is the and the oxytocin is the is the the substantia. I don't know. Uh -huh. uh, the, the opposite of the yes yeah, substance opposite of the um, cortisol. That is the substance of the stress. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Very and, and, and I can talk about a lot of yeah. Great. But this is the reason that you feel better when you are together with your girlfriend. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for letting me know. Now, uh, as you said, I mean, when we're close with people, it just came to my mind the thought that, um, you know, if it was with like everyone, if we felt better with everyone, I think it would be more relaxing to ride on the bus, you know, because we are close with many people, but it's the opposite. So it's, you know, something that I think it's only with the right person or the, with the right people, but great. Very good. Uh, so now we're going to jump into what um, is the activity for tonight. As I told you guys, we were supposed to work on this conversation last night. We did practice it. And tonight we're going to go into breakout rooms to fully practice the conversation. However, that's going to be after a while. Before that, we're going to continue talking about the past. We did last night mention some things about, um, you know, some of the objects or possessions that we would like to bring back if possible. But those are just ideas. Now we're going to see some words that are very specific. Um, to use when it comes to mentioning past situations because in English of course there are going to be some um, there are some prepositions that are normally used only when we refer to situations in certain times when we refer to things in the past one of the most common ones is going to be ago if you uh, have ever heard this word this one over here if you have ever heard that word it means Um, something like it, it will be in, in at the beginning, basically, in the translation, because you will translate it as as something like "ace." See, "ace." So over 60 years ago, you will have to translate that phrase into "hace 60 años." So "más de 60 años." "Hace más de 60 años." So it's uh one of the most common phrases, as I said, that we're going to need to refer or to explain situations that are fully in the past. So, what are the three aspects or three most common aspects that we do take into consideration when we're talking about the past? One of them is a point of time in the past. That is one of them. Then we have a period of, a period of time that continues into the present. So, a period of time that continues into the present. For this, we are commonly using also present perfect. That's something that we sometimes use um, when we refer to these situations. And then we have um, a period of time in the past. So something that started in the past and finished in the past. So in simple words, we have the first one. It's an event in the past. Okay, so the first one is an event, something that took place in the past. Then we have um, something that is started. And if you guys remember the other day, someone mentions this word since, And I told you that since is used only when something is started in the past, not with things that are going to start in the future. Okay, for future events, we are going to use exactly that word, starting. See, no since, sino you know, que starting. So since is used for something that is started in the past and is continuing to happen now. And, and if you wondered, that is the reason why when you guys uh, get new clothing and have, you know, Uh, some famous brands on you, you see that they like to brag and they like to write down when they were founded. Like they normally have since and then the year that they started business. Y ese es el motivo. O sea, si ustedes alguna vez se han fijado eh, en marcas, directamente creo que Polo es una de las más comunes que hace eso. Si ustedes alguna vez han tenido algún artículo de esta marca, Normalmente tiene eso, sí, que dice since, no recuerdo el año ahorita. Si alguno tiene polo, muéstrelo. Uh, no, it's just kidding. So they normally write that down. Since and then the, the year they started business. Lo que significa o lo que quiere explicar como que toda la experiencia que tienen, ¿verdad? Que iniciamos desde ese entonces. So that's when you guys are going to be using since. Um, and once again, for future things, cuando yo quiero decir 
eh, en el futuro, como por ejemplo, la, la fiesta empieza desde las 4, si le estoy explicando a alguien, so we're going to say the party is, is starting, sí, en este caso sería is starting, the party is starting at 4, entonces va a iniciar a las 4. We're not going to say the party starts since 4, or the party is since 4, no sería de esa forma. And then we have a period of time in the past. This is when we are going to explain um, something, as I said before, that it started in the past and finished in the past. So it's already done. But we just want to clear or clarify uh, when it started and when it ended. So uh, now we're going to get to see what are the different ways of expressing those situations. The first example that we have is when did World War II take place? Remember, here is something that many people forget, and last night I, I kind of skipped explaining or re-explaining this, which is the fact that when you have this verb over here, this is an auxiliary verb, but a verb after all. So when you have this auxiliary verb over here, did, um, it basically takes the force or takes the weight of the past. That's the reason why when you have the main verb of the question, which is going to be take, um, it's going to be in present, okay? So please don't make the mistake of writing this verb in the past because the past is going to end here. That happens mostly when you have this auxiliary in use, okay? Mostly when you have this auxiliary because with other uh, examples or in other kinds of questions, you will have to use um, the past form of the verb. But when you have the auxiliary did, it's very common that you're only going to go with um, did and then the next verb is going to be in its present form. So the question is, when did World War II take place? Not took place, but take place. And uh, different answers. We, here we have three different examples of answers. Um, the first one, during the 1940s. During the 1940s. So that's, you know, a way of explaining that it was back then. En los 40 So during the 1940s. Then we have in the 1940s. In the 1940s. Sí, cuando decimos during, o sea, pues se refiere a verdad a que durante ese periodo estuvo pasando. If we say in, we are being specific. And however, of course, here it's not going to be so specific. If, for example, you were to uh, establish the specific date, you will have to use the preposition in. Si ustedes fuesen a mencionar exactamente la fecha en la que algo sucedió, eh, en ese caso, ¿verdad? Perdón, se utilizaría on, on, sí, on, no in, sino que on, on. Si fuésemos a mencionar la fecha, aquí es específico hasta cierto punto, es específico solamente con la década. Entonces, es casi lo mismo, ¿verdad? Cuando tenemos que mencionar meses, yo no digo on March, sino que digo in March, ¿sí? I will go in March. Porque es un periodo de tiempo bastante largo y no estoy siendo directo acerca de la fecha específica en la cual voy a realizar la actividad. So, uh, that is why we have in the 40s. If you guys were to be super specific and say that it happened on August, what? I think it was the 16th. August 16th, 1944. Well, then you will have to, um, to say it with on. And then... We have this other way, over 60 years ago. Esa es como la más vaga, por decir así. Es la que en realidad eh, no aclara al 100% ¿verdad? del periodo, sino que solo digo over 60 years ago. Esta se puede utilizar como la más segura, además. Cuando ustedes no recuerdan la fecha en la que algo sucedió, ustedes establecen un periodo de tiempo que consideran lógico y luego... Pues mencionamos, ¿verdad? Eh, más o menos hace cuánto tiempo. Claro, a la fecha, hoy en día, ya sería over 70 years ago. Casi, casi over 80 years ago. It's almost over 80 years ago. So yeah, that would be for uh, World War II. During, it's the first one, cuando decimos, la, cuando tenemos idea, ¿verdad? De cuando aquello sucedió, diríamos during and then the decade. Then we have in the and then the decade or the period of time. And then we have the less specific one, which is going to be over uh, a certain amount of time ago. Entonces, eso sería hace, pues, tanto tiempo. Una vez más, el ago, 
se va a referir a hace, ¿sí? Y pues en, en español se va a escribir al principio de la oración, no necesariamente al final. Entonces sería um, over 60 years ago, hace más de 60 años. All right. This, of course, is not only for long periods of time. You can, of course, use it um, for, for situations that took place just recently. Like, um, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about the pandemic, but it's like a general example. So, sorry, sorry, guys, but I will do. So, um, let's say that somebody asks you, like, when did the pandemic happen? You can say, um, during the last three years. Entonces, ese podría ser un ejemplo. During the last three years, durante los últimos tres años. Uh, or, in the last three years, en los últimos tres años. O si no, over, what? Two years ago. Sí, over two years ago. Hace más de dos años. Entonces, eh, esa sería como la forma para también hablar acerca de cosas más actuales. Podríamos decir, um... If there was a visit, we're talking about that, people or your family tells you, oh, your aunt, that's a nice chocolate, Alejandro. <laughs> so, <laughs> your family tells you, um, like, uh, we had a visit, your aunt came to visit earlier today. So, you ask them, like, when did she come? Like, at what hour? So, they can tell you, oh, during the last, what, during the last three hours, See, during the last three hours, or in the last three hours, or... Over an hour ago, or over, sorry, this will be over four hours ago, porque en este caso sería hace cuánto tiempo vino. Entonces, si estuvo por tres horas, puedo decir que vino hace más de cuatro horas. Entonces, sería over four hours ago, ¿sí? Pero bueno, esta es una, ¿verdad? Para hablar acerca de un punto en el tiempo, algo que pasó en un eh, momento en el tiempo en pasado. Then we have something that started in the past and is still uh, available in the present. So we have it here. How long has the United Nations been in existence? How long has the United Nations been in existence? And uh, we have three options. Once again, we can say since 1945, since 1945, that's if you know the detail. If you know the detail, you can say that uh, since 1945. Then you say, since World War II ended, that's what I knew. That's uh, you know the 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 um the highlight that I had that the UN was basically formed right after uh, World War II ended. So since World War II ended, uh, the thing here is that you're linking two different things. Like if the person knows when World War II ended, they are going to have an idea or they're going to know when um the UN was established. However, if they don't have an idea of when World War II ended, well, there you are basically done and you will have to go for, once again, the laziest and less specific option. See, sí, esa es como la más aragana y la menos específica. If you say, for about the last 60 years. Si ustedes hasta si, si, si escuchan la frase, ¿verdad? Suena como eh, bastante abierta en el sentido que no estoy siendo específico en nada o sea, básicamente no conozco el dato yo solamente sé que ha pasado cierta cantidad de tiempo entonces yo digo for about, six, for about the last 60 years ¿Sí? más o menos por los últimos 60 años entonces eh, eso es bien bien ambiguo y no tiene necesariamente verdad una idea clara de cuándo aquello ha sucedido en cambio acá si ustedes sí, si, pues, conocen el dato, you can say since 1945. If you know the date, the specific date, for this occasion, you can use since. Para cosas como estas, ustedes pueden utilizar since. Para, eh, si saben la fecha exacta, no necesitarán usar on, sino que pueden decir since. Since, and then, of course, you guys mention the specific date. Let's say that it was um, since May 11th, 1945. See, so that's that's the date. You know it and you're clear about it. So the, the next option is, is, of course, setting a different point of reference, something that is more common knowledge, which is the end of World War II, or the less specific one, the more ambiguous one, which is going to be for about the last uh, 60 years. All right. Now, the last option is a period of time in the past. 
so this is um something that you guys are going to say when something started in the past and finished in the past the example that we have here how long were the Beatles together how long were the Beatles together um so you guys can go ahead and be specific about it if you have an idea and say from 1960 to 1970 so that's very specific that's uh the closest idea to the actual thing but then for all these ones you have options that are less specific and a little bit lazy um so you can say for 10 years all right this one sounds specific because it does but it's not the most specific sí, o sea, para hablar acerca de ser específicos la que dice from to esa será la más específica Es decir for 10 years es como sí o sea por 10 años sí pero no necesariamente explica verdad el periodo en el cual esto sucedió y la idea cuando se trata acerca de periodos en el pasado es mencionar el periodo decir uh, let's say that I ask you since when was Mauricio Funes president in El Salvador um, so you guys have to be specific about that and tell me from I forgot I think it was uh, what was it 2012? 2012? No me acuerdo. Do you guys have any idea? Do you guys remember? Um, 2009, uh, from 2009 to 2014. 14. Okay, so from yes. 2009 to 2014. All right, good. Yeah, I kind of slipped there. Yeah, I forgot about that one. So yeah, he was president from uh, 2009 or 2009 to 2016. So there, there you have it. That's another thing that is very specific. And, um, you know, you, you have an idea. Now, problem is, for example, if somebody asks you, how long was Mauricio Funes president? And if you don't know the answer, like me, you can say, oh, for five years. Si no necesariamente deben recordar la fecha, sino que solo es, ah, por cinco años. O sea, y en, eso, en ese caso... Ustedes, por eso les digo que es menos específica, ¿verdad? Se libran de contestar de forma correcta, o sea, con el dato correcto, y a la misma vez dan una idea de lo que la persona quiere saber. Entonces, las últimas opciones en todas estas van a ser opciones casi como zafadas, digamos. Ya para, para poder zafarme, ¿verdad?, de la pregunta y poder dar mi mejor eh, opción de respuesta. So, yeah, this is for the past. ¿Alguna duda que tengamos con cómo vamos a utilizar estas frases para el pasado? Already, seems like no. Then we're going to move on into the future. Now we go to talk about predicting the future with Will. Um, Will, if you guys uh, didn't know, is going to be one of the more um, strict words or strict structures that we have in English because when we use will we are playing with a very big certainty of things however when we use will to predict things will is not going to be that accurate okay but when we're talking about will in terms of like explaining um when or how something is going to happen we are very specific in will is basically like an attachment that we have with, you know, the, the situation that we're explaining. Now, once again, we have three different um, scenarios where we can use will to predict future events. So the first one is use will to predict future events or situations. The second, use future continues to predict ongoing actions. And then use future perfect with predict, to predict actions that will be completed by a certain time. Muy bien. Tenemos entonces que en todos estos casos vamos a utilizar will. Ahora tenemos uno donde es el will base, que es básicamente utilizar will y otro verbo. Luego tenemos el will con continuo, continuous, que es casi lo mismo que usar verdad los gerundios, pero en este caso va a ser un will con continuidad para, o sea, referirnos a cosas que estarán pasando en algún punto del futuro. Y luego será el will perfecto, que será el um, will 
que yo uso para referirme a algo que va a haber pasado para algún punto en el futuro. Es como algo de lo que yo estoy haciendo una predicción, ¿verdad? Digo, eh, para el 2000, que estamos ahorita, 23, para el 2028, yo me habré mudado a Canadá, por decir algo. Entonces es algo que, lo que yo digamos, que yo estoy seguro de que eso va a ser así. Ahora, es una predicción y por eso les digo, aquí Will deja de ser tan estricto y es como que se presta un poco para hacer este tipo de predicciones. So yeah, here we have it. Uh, the first example is, computers will recognize any voice command. You won't need a keyboard. Well, this was a prediction, uh, and please let me clarify, this is a book from, what, maybe the 20s, like, you know, starting on the year 2000, 2001, something like that. So it's a very old book. Okay, so back in the day, they did have computers, of course, but they didn't expect computers to become so powerful. Nowadays, for us, this is something common, you know, only asking things from, let's say, your Alexa or your um, your phone. It's just common nowadays. Uh, and our devices are able to understand many, many languages, are able to understand even giggling, are able to understand whispering, So computers have become able to do this. So this was a prediction of 20, 25 years ago. And nowadays it's a reality. So computers will uh, recognize any voice command. You will need a keyboard. So yes, that's something that has happened. So congratulations to the people who predicted this. Now, the next one is uh future with continues that this means that it's something that is going to be happening at a specific point in the future so people will be living in cities under the ocean well this is something that has not happened yet or at least not in a large scale but you know it's a possibility still people are looking at this possibility there are uh many ideas that follow this um this proposition But still, it's something that is not happening. So with this one, they have failed a little bit. So yeah, people will be living in cities under the ocean. Probably the prediction was not for 20 years. Here it's ambiguous because it doesn't even... Sorry, it doesn't even provide a time frame. I would like it to have a time frame, but it doesn't have a time frame. Therefore, it's just a prediction for the future. It's just something that they thought or thing that is going to happen in the future and then we have uh, um teacher yes teacher, excuse me uh, what means ongoing ongoing se refiere a algo que está en desarrollo algo que está sucediendo uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, how we translate uh, the example people will be living in cities under the ocean las personas vivirán en ciudades uh, debajo del océano. Vivirán. Uh -huh. O estarán viviendo, más bien. Las personas estarán viviendo. Ajá, estarán viviendo en ciudades uh, bajo el océano. Ah, ok. Sí. Ok, thank you. Uh -huh. Yes, no problem. Entonces, esa sería, ¿verdad? Las personas estarán viviendo bajo ciudades bajo el océano. Eh, es algo, como les digo, que no ha pasado todavía, al menos no en escalas grandes. Y pues... La predicción no establece uh, para cuándo es, o sea, cuánto tiempo va a pasar para que eso Es como una posibilidad. Mm -hmm. Es una posibilidad de Podría algo que va suceder. a pasar. ¿Hola? Podría suceder. Mm -hmm. Así. Sí. Podemos Ahora, un ejemplo, digamos, más claro sería si ustedes tienen un plan. O sea, si ustedes ya, por ejemplo, para mañana en la noche... Eh, ustedes quieren hacer alguna actividad con sus familias, con sus mamás y así, entonces ustedes pueden decir, ¿verdad? Tomorrow by this time, I will be, ¿sí? I will be cooking for my mom, or I will be, I don't know, having a feast with my mom. Entonces, significa, o se refiere a algo que ustedes van a estar haciendo mañana, eso es como más, eh, más certero, más cercano. Eh, y para eso también lo podríamos utilizar, o sea, para predecir situaciones que ustedes van a, a, a realizar, ¿verdad? En un corto eh, periodo de tiempo. Like, I can say, for example, um, what? On Friday, by this hour, we are going to be finishing, see, or sorry, we will be finishing 
we will be finishing the course. Entonces, el viernes a esta hora vamos a estar terminando el curso. Entonces, estoy prediciendo algo en, eh, que va a estar pasando en el futuro. Así que para eso es que utilizamos esta, eh, esta estructura principalmente, ¿verdad? Si, por ejemplo, yo voy a salir con mis amigos, yo puedo decir, yeah, tomorrow by this time, I will be going to the movies with my friends. Mañana a esta hora voy a estar yendo a, al cine con mis amigos. It's not a reality, it's not something that I will do, but it's just an, an option, you know, like an idea of something you can predict um, when you already have like a plan, when you already have like an idea of what you're going to do. So yeah, then we have uh, use future perfect to predict actions that will be completed by a certain time. Um, so the options or the examples that we have are within 20 years, esto se refiere a dentro de, ¿sí? cuando utilizamos el within, es dentro de. Within 20 years, scientists will have discovered a cure for baldness. ¿Alguien sabe qué es baldness? ¿Alguno de ustedes conoce el significado de Calvicio. Calvicio. Exactamente. So, very good. Um, so, within 20 years, scientists will have discovered a cure for baldness. Mm, I think it hasn't happened. Perdón, no estoy tan actualizado acerca del tema, pero creo que es algo que no ha pasado necesariamente, al menos no de forma tan extraordinaria, ¿verdad? Que hay una cura directa para la calvicie. So, Uh, maybe this is a prediction that was not, you know, accurate. But um, as I said before, when you have uh, plans, when you have an idea of what you're going to do, um, you can say within, uh, bueno, el within normalmente se usa para tiempos un tanto extendidos, como por ejemplo, tres años, cinco años, diez años, veinte años, como es el ejemplo acá. No les recomendaría que lo usen para hablar del próximo año. O sea, si ustedes dicen within a year, suena un poco exagerado. Within two years, lo mismo. Eh, sería mejor by. Y luego, cuando ustedes utilicen el by, que es la siguiente opción, esta de acá, eh, digan el año, ¿verdad? By 2024, by 2025. Entonces sería eh, para. Sí, ese by se va a utilizar de esa forma. Para el 2024, para el 2025, yo habré hecho esto, habré hecho lo otro. So, by 2024, um, I will be taking French classes. See, I will have, uh, sorry, I will have started, I will have started my French classes. Esa podría ser una, una opción, ¿verdad? By 2024, I will have started my French classes. Significa que para el 2024 voy a haber iniciado mis clases de francés. That's a desire? Probably, yes. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's an option, an example of something you can say with a prediction for like, perfect times in the future. Now, el within, como les dije, se guarda más que todo para situaciones que sobrepasan los tres años. So you can say within four years, um, my family will have, uh, what? Will have celebrated four more birthdays for me. Sí, o sea, dentro de cuatro años mi familia habrá celebrado cuatro cumpleaños más para mí. Entonces, <laughs> Muy vago, pero un ejemplo después de todo. So, yeah, within, para cosas que van a pasar en un periodo de tiempo un tanto eh, prolongado, y by, for things that are going to happen, like, in a short time. También se puede utilizar para tiempos muy prolongados, pero el by es más recomendado para situaciones, pues, diversas, ¿verdad? No es tan extraño escuchar el within, eh, perdón, el by, con cosas que van a pasar en corto. ¿Sí, tenis Yes, I have a doubt. Um, can I use uh, going instead of will? Yes. Uh, the difference that we have is that when we use going, we are going to be using it in a less accurate way. Like will is supposed to be more serious. You know, when you say will is like a proposition, like something you are sure that you're going to do. And going is more like a plan. It's more like an idea. It's not like you're... Um, is strictly going to follow that idea or respect the idea that you have right now. But will is supposed to like push you into doing so. So it is possible. I don't know if you have catched it, but I have used going a few times. O sea, yo sí me he dado cuenta que utilicé going en lugar de will un par de veces. Entonces es porque, o sea, sí, verdad, es, es válido, 
pero no es quizá lo más apropiado con planes o con situaciones que sean eh, estrictamente serias. Cuando yo estoy hablando acerca de algo eh, como una meta o algo muy serio acerca de lo que alguien va a hacer, pues en ese caso es más recomendado utilizar Will. Sí, pero igual, going es, es posible. It is possible. All right. Bueno, no sé si tenemos alguna duda con este otro eh, lapso, este otro tema que sería acerca del futuro. Si no, pues vamos a pasar a la práctica de la conversación, que básicamente um, estaríamos cerrando, ¿verdad? Con eso, eh, la clase de hoy. Y creo que incluso estaríamos cerrando con eso ya los temas eh, asignados a trabajar. So, any doubts, any, any um, ideas or comments you would like to add? All right. Sí, sí. Yes, Francisco. Uh, please repeat me. Uh, uh, Puede repetirme uh, lo de lo de by, por favor. No logré entender muy bien. Lo siento. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. El caso es que within, sí, es, uh -huh. se refiere, verdad, a decir dentro de. Por lo tanto, within es más recomendado que se use con eh, cosas que van a pasar en un periodo de tiempo un tanto más extendido. En cambio, by se usa para, para decir para. Eh, Incluso se usa muy comúnmente para hablar acerca de citas. Por ejemplo, cuando yo tengo una cita en el médico y eh, ya me dijeron, ¿verdad? Que tengo que estar a las cuatro. Entonces yo digo, I have to be at the doctor by four. O sea, es que como es que esa es la hora a la que yo tengo que estar. Entonces okay. aquí eh, se utiliza el by para referirse a eso. Sí, para tal tiempo, by... Uh, eh, lo que sí es importante es que en el by se utiliza el año, o sea, yo voy a decir, ¿verdad? By 2024, ¿sí? Entonces, para el 2024, y pues ahí luego agrego el ejemplo de lo que, de lo que yo espero haber logrado. I will have... Um, y luego, importante recordarlo, que esto es algo que también había mencionado, cuando utilizamos el have, recordad que tenemos que usar, eh, usar la forma del pasado participio de los verbos, lo que significa, ¿verdad? Que tenemos también que referirnos un poco a los verbos regulares e irregulares, y pues cómo se estructura cada uno de ellos. Pero eh, cuando utilizamos el by, sería para eso, para referirnos a situaciones, si bien es cierto, siempre en el futuro, pero puede ser tanto para periodos cortos de tiempo como para periodos eh, muy extendidos. En cambio, within es extraño que ustedes digan within a year. Sí. Se puede cuando estamos hablando tal vez de metas en una empresa. O sea, si, si ustedes tienen, por ejemplo, el puesto de gerentes, ustedes le pueden decir como para motivar a sus empleados, ¿verdad? We want to grow within this year. O sea, como queremos crecer durante este año. Pero aparte de esos casos, es bien raro escuchar el within. Para... Pregunta, ¿también se puede usar el by, por ejemplo, para los meses o solo para el año? Es más recomendable para los años, pero okay. también se puede. O sea, yo okay. puedo decir, ¿verdad? By September... I will have finished uh, five more courses, five, five more English courses. Podría decirlo. O si no, puedo decir también by September 2024. O sea, también lo puedo decir. By September 2024, I will have already finished my English classes. Sí, o sea, eso sería para septiembre de 2024. Ya habría terminado mis clases de inglés. Ok, teacher. Thanks. Ok, you're welcome. No problem. Muy bien. Um, so, yes, you guys can, as I said, use it with months as well. Yes, Janira? Uh, teacher, for me, it was difficult to to feel <clears throat> exercise <coughs> on the, in the platform mm -hmm. when you need use uh, during, in, and for. The one for me, right here. For me, are confused. Okay. Uh, when you use um, for, in, and uh, during to, to from. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 a tricky topic. It's something tricky. For example, during and in, when we refer to situations that take place in one specific point in the past, are similar. During and in are used in a similar way. Those and the exercise the 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 Beatles. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Uh huh. Ese vaya el caso de I esto. Difficult. Cuando utilizamos este, 
es, por ejemplo, si yo conozco bien el dato, si yo estoy seguro, ¿verdad?, de que algo sucedió desde y hasta, es ahí cuando yo utilizo el from and to, ¿sí?, from and to. For, es importante que recordemos que for se usa con eh, los momentos o los, las explicaciones más ambiguas, ¿sí? Es que el caso, si yo, por ejemplo, digo for 10 years, eso significa por 10 años, pero... Yo no estoy especificando en este, por ejemplo, si yo utilizo, si lo utilizo para este tipo de, de referencia de tiempo, yo no estoy siendo específico en el punto de inicio ni el punto de finalización de aquella actividad. Solamente menciono la cantidad de tiempo, ¿verdad? Que eso llevó. Entonces yo solo digo for 10 years. Lo mismo acá. Si estoy hablando acerca de algo que ha estado pasando por eh, cierta cantidad de tiempo, normalmente yo debería utilizar since, pero... Si no recuerdo desde cuándo algo pasó, entonces yo también utilizo for. Um, aquí, por ejemplo, no es necesario utilizar el about, ¿ok? Y el about se usa siempre para agregar también eh, cierto nivel de duda, cierto nivel de incerteza. O sea, ustedes cuando utilizan about en estos tiempos así, se refiere a que no están seguros. Entonces, esto los cubre a ustedes de que alguien les pueda decir, ¿verdad? No, estás equivocado. Yo digo, no, I, I said for about. I'm not sure. Like, for about means that it's an idea, ¿ok? En cambio, si ustedes dicen for the last 60 years, es como que ustedes están seguros, ¿verdad? De que ha sido así por los últimos 60 años. Um, pero si ustedes dicen for about, uh, se cubren la espalda en el sentido de, um, pues, de que no necesariamente les vayan a inculpar, ¿verdad? que ustedes se hayan equivocado con la fecha que han dicho. Entonces, for es más común para eso, para hablar acerca de tiempos eh, cuando tal vez nosotros no estamos, eh, no tenemos certeza de, de aquello, o sea, de cuándo aquello sucedió. Es más como para dar una aproximación la, la utilización de for. En cambio, el from y to es para hablar acerca de algo que, como les dije ya previamente, inició en un punto en el pasado y terminó en un punto en el pasado. Entonces, like in my case, for example, I started I studied at a university from uh, 2013 to 2019, or 2018. Yeah, from 2013 to 2018. And I worked at the university from 2019 to 2022. Entonces, eh, estoy hablando, ¿verdad?, de, de tiempos específicos en el pasado, algo que empezó y terminó en un punto específico. Ahora, diferente sería que yo diga, oh, I studied at the, at the university for five years. Ustedes no tienen idea de cuándo fue que empezó ese periodo. Entonces, yo solo digo for five years y es así, ¿verdad?, por cinco años, pero no hay una certeza o algo como de seguridad acerca de cuándo aquello pasó. Um, y lo mismo, I can say, I worked at the university for three years. I'm not being specific about that either. So, yeah. And el caso, regresando aquí al during and in, estos se utilizan de forma casi que intercambiada. O sea, no necesariamente hay una gran diferencia entre utilizar during or in. El during principalmente, o sea, es para decir, ¿verdad? Eh, mientras otra cosa pasaba. Y cuando digo in, es para decir, pues, en ese tiempo específico. Pero, por ejemplo, um, si, más que todo cuando lo utilizamos así, ¿verdad? Con, con décadas, no hay una mayor diferencia. O sea, no hay como un, un punto el, en el cual uno tenga mayor peso que otro. Sí puede ser, en, si yo digo, por ejemplo, um, during the last, what? During the last Aerosmith concert, ¿sí? Y ahí, pues, eh, yo puedo decir que eso estaba pasando mientras el último concierto de Aerosmith, ¿sí? Y si yo digo, in the last Aerosmith concert, eh, no especifico, ¿verdad? Si pasó, por ejemplo, antes, pasó durante o pasó después del concierto. Solo digo que pasó, pues, en ese concierto. Cuando utilizo in, en cosas así. Pero si yo hablo acerca de un periodo de tiempo más extendido, como es este caso, una década, pues el significado no va a tener, ¿verdad?, una mayor alteración eh, si utilizo during o si utilizo in. Ok, um, no sé si había alguna otra duda. Bueno, creo que lo de, la, lo de la conversación va a quedar entonces pendiente.
Eh, mañana, recordar nada más, ¿verdad? Mañana tenemos clase, nos vamos a estar viendo el jueves y el viernes. Eh, lo que sí es que creo que vamos a estar trabajando en un par de cosas distintas para estos días que aún nos quedan. Una de ellas me gustaría que sea lo de los idioms, porque ya les he dicho que son frases bien importantes y cosas que les van a servir. Aparentemente, tal vez no tanto, cuando ustedes vean eh, que pues en este punto, ¿verdad? Estoy aprendiendo y yo digo, ah, ¿y ¿cuándo me voy a encontrar con esa frase? Pero créanme, luego ustedes eh, pues van a, van a ser más profesionales en el idioma después de aprender cosas como esas, como los idioms. Y por otro lado, no sé, tal vez practicar algo más de lectura. But we're gonna see, ok. Next Thursday, o el jueves, eh, les voy a dar la opción a elegir, ¿verdad? Cuál podría ser el tema para la última reunión que tengamos. But for now, basically that's it. Um, so yeah, thank you guys very much. For those of you who have plans for tomorrow or plan to, you know, celebrate or commemorate your moms, I hope you have an amazing time. For the moms that might be here, Congratulations on your day for tomorrow. Hope you guys get to enjoy it. Sorry, it will not be guys. It will be girls. So hope you girls get to enjoy it a lot. And um, yeah, so have a good one. And see you Thursday, guys. Thank you, teacher. Bye. 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 Bye.